نحمد و نستعین و نستغفره و نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا و من سیعات عمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له و من يضلل فلا هادي له و اشهد لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له و اشهد ان محمد عبد و رسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته ان شاء الله today we will start with the tafsir of surah yasin uh so when we study any tafsir there are some usool there are certain principles uh that are followed like you know what are the sources used by the scholar by the mufassirun who is a mufassirun the person who does tafsir uh what are the sources used by that scholar who does the tafsir is something that we should have in mind so the first source of implication the source of interpretation of the quran is what through the quran in and of itself theek okay? hai um some verses of the quran actually explain the other verses of the quran i'll give you a basic example incident of adam alayhi salam has been repeated how many times many times theek okay? hai so what they do is the scholars they combine all the verses right understand study see the background and then they explain a particular verse this is how they they, they take help from the quran to understand the rest of the verses the second source is what the hadith that's the most second most important uh, source teaching of the quran to the people was one of the main objects objectives of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam right and you know it is a big miracle that not just the wordings of allah subhanahu wa taala uh have been preserved but also the interpretation of those verses have been preserved which we call what the ahadith they have been preserved in a very very miraculous uh, manner then of course the views of the companion is another important source of interpretation why why the companions who who was their teacher prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right so whatever they quote uh, that will be given a lot of importance it literally comes next to our hadith the views of companions and then you've got tabeen who are tabeen this is a generation who didn't actually get to be in the company of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but they were students of the companions so if they quote anything coming from any of the sahabi then that will be given a lot of importance the fifth thing is what the literal meaning of arabic language that that has been used in the quran that's also very important those verses of the quran that are very simple in meaning do we have such verses in the quran that is straightforward simple meaning hmm of course we do so they can be uh, understood literally by knowing uh the language the arabic language the quranic language and i would like to say here that our grammar students have an edge over here they will have an edge because they're learning the language uh but to interpret the whole of the quran based on you know the language is something which is not permissible it has to be seen in the light of the rest of the the first four things if it contradicts if there is a clash it creates confusion then you can't go by the language of quran you will have to kind of see it in the light of ahadith and the views coming from companion and tabeen and all of that are we clear about this because there is a huge fitna out there because they think that they know the language and therefore they can interpret the quran i wish it was that that simple and yes they might be able to understand quite a lot of the quran but then fir kya hoga jab mushkil ayat aayegi they will be stumped and they won't even realize it that's the worst part acha so any person interpreting the quran we know that it has to be a scholar people who have actually given the done the tafsir of the quran have spent their lives 
understanding and studying and then giving their opinion. Okay? But they need to have full command over certain areas as well. This is a criteria. For example, they need to know Arabic language. They need to know Arabic grammar. Both are very important. You can't, uh, you know, undermine these two. Uh, Asbab e Nazul, background of the revelation. When a particular ayah was revealed, what was going on? Had somebody questioned? Uh, was there something else going on? When was it revealed? What was going on? That's very important. And along with that, of course, uh, what are the aggregated verses? Do you know there are aggregated verses in the in the Quran? Are you aware of that? Let me just give you a very basic, simple example. Quran talks about fasting just in the month, uh, just in uh, the second surah, Surah Baqarah. Okay? Uh, and where it talks about fasting, the first verse that has been talked about is about the fasting that was there before Islam. And right after that, the Quran talks about the fasting of the month of Ramadan. Who would know, you know, which one is abrogated? Very important, very important to know, or we'll be all confused. Then, of course, Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is also very important, along with interpretation of hadith, interpretation of sahabas, and interpretation of tabi. They also need to have full command on Arabic proverbs, mahavre jo arbi mein samal hote the. Because apparently something would seem very, very strange because we're just trying to translate it. It's almost like, you know, Iqbal ka share English mein pardo. Shakespeare ki koi, koi, uh, koi baat aap in Urdu mein samjhane lago. How absurd does it sound? So we, he, these people, they need to have complete command on Arabic Proverbs, and last but not the least, they need to be clear about the Islamic rules, Islamic laws. All of these are the segments where you have to have complete command before actually even thinking about doing the tafsir of the Quran. Okay? Now, what about our own intellect? What about that? What do you think? Am I allowed to use my aql? Quran repeatedly says what? Ulul al right? It says use your intellect. So can I just like go ahead and use my intellect to understand the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Not in, in and of itself. Not, you know, by disconnecting yourself from the rest of the, uh, the fields that we have talked about. If, it's, if it is done in presence of all the fields that I've just talked about, alhamdulillah, you can do so basically, our intellect is like a double-edged sword. It can take you down very easily. But if you have the right uh, knowledge of your religion, right knowledge, all the commands that are just all the areas that I've talked about where you need to have full command, of course, you can use your intellect, inshallah. Uh, but before I begin Surah Yasin, I would like all of us, because I know there are a lot of people sitting here a lot of on-site on and online students, a lot of my team members, a lot of my teachers who are very intelligent and they've got all the potential to understand things and process them the way it should be processed. But before we do that, I'm not asking you not to use your intellect, but before we do that, we need to make a very, very special dua for ourselves that may I use my intellect as it should be used. And I should not get carried away with it. I should not go over, overboard. And you know, this. Uh, 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 not that I want to judge somebody, but somebody starts talking about religion by saying, oh, you know what? I think, switch out of that. You know, I'm tuned out. You think, should be starting with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said about it, the companions, Tabi, all of that, and along with that, if you have something to talk about, something, something to reflect about, alhamdulillah. But if you start with saying, I think this is how it should be and this is how it shouldn't be, there's a very serious problem. Take it? Now, why am I saying that all of us need to make dua? Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he prayed for Ibn Abbas. He said, oh Allah, teach him the interpretation of the Quran and bestow him with the proper sense of deed. And it is said that it was after this dua that Ibn Abbas used his extraordinary intellect. He's a super intelligent person. He used it to interpret the Quran. We need to make that dua. 
And it is a very humbling act that we can do right at the beginning of starting, you know, understanding the tafsir of any of the surahs of the Muslim. Please, can we not take pictures in the class? Jazakallah. We had shared uh, an image. How many of you haven't seen that image on the group, on WhatsApp group? Can you just raise your hands? There was there were certain very soft reminders coming from my team to your various socks and shawls. Haven't seen. Sabne dekhe, you haven't seen? You haven't seen? It's on the group. What's it? Group ke upar jaake, please. I want my online students and on-site students to go through those uh, instructions. And in and one of the instructions, a request is that you must not be taking pictures because we share the slides with you all. You will not be deprived of it, inshallah. Achha. Starting with Surah Yasin, certain very basic things that all of us must know. It's a Makan Surah. Uh, it has got 83 verses. Okay. Uh, we find frequent pauses and short phrases in the surah. And usually Makkan surahs are like that. Very short surahs. And something that is very sh something that is short is usually very powerful. Right? So it can have a very strong effect on somebody who has got a very uh, you know, uh, who's got a believing soul, somebody who's coming and sitting here with an open mind and heart, inshallah. Okay. Now, the Makkan Surahs, all the Makkan Surahs that you have in the Musaf, they basically focus on certain aspects of Iman. Uh, and the three aspects that these Makkan Surahs focus on are what? Three aspects. Number one is Tawheed. Do we know what Tawheed means? Yes, of Allah. The second thing that it focuses on is what? Risala. Do you know what Risala is? It's not Nazim. What is it? Prophet. Yeah. So uh, Risala is basically to believe that the Messenger وسلم, was the last Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he brought the re revelation to us and he was sent for the whole of humanity. This is Iman on Risala. And the third thing is what? Your reality of Al Akhirah. What is going to happen when I die? What is going to happen uh, on the day of judgment? So these are the three areas that any Makkan Surah would focus on. And they are from our Iman. It's going to help us to elevate our Iman. If I have Tawheed, my, my sense of Tawheed, concept of Tawheed is very, very clear, sharp. I have complete faith in Risala. And I can see the next slide, the next world, as if it's going to happen in a blink of an eye. That is, you know, a very high elevated Iman. Okay? So these are the three things. Now, I would like to talk about the subject matter of Surah Yasin. Surah Yasin is the 36th Surah of the Quran. 36th Surah. What comes before that? You've got Surah Fatih and you've got Surah, surah Sabah. Surah Sabah is the 34th. Surah Fatih is 35th. And Surah Yasin is the 36th Surah. Achha. The interesting thing is that Surah Fatir and Surah Saba are also Makkan Surahs. So what do you think they talk about? Same what same thing? Tawheed, Risala, and Akhir. Take it? But there is a slight twist. There is a slight change when you come to Surah Yasin. Slight change. And what is that change? Surah Yasin predominantly talks about Risala, the prophethood. Whereas Fatir and Saba, they talk about Risala as well, but predominantly they talk about Tawheed. So there's a slight difference. Here is more focus kis pe hai? on the prophethood. Okay? So Surah Yasin places a very heavy emphasis on prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay? Now I have a question for all of my students and listeners. Allah kare ki last session ke baad sab students ban chuke hain. Thik hai? So the question is, when you came to know that Quest is offering tafsir, um, I do know some of you approached somebody asking, what is Arabi going to teach with Surah? Some of you had approached us. And I kind of let them know beforehand, I'm going to do Surah Yasi. And I could feel registrations coming in after that. So my question to you is, that when you heard that we are going to do Surah Yasin to begin with in this course, what made you 
what motivated you to come and sit for the tafsir of Surah Yasin? You, you read Surah Yasin regularly, you think it's the heart of the Quran, Seema, you were saying something? Never done this. Never done this. Chalo, okay. Very good. Very Surah Yasin. Okay. Any other reason for coming and sitting for Surah Yasin? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Ji. As a child, we never did Surah Yasin. We always did Surah Yasin. Achha. Achha. You told to read Surah Yasin. Achha. So you felt, so, you know, uh, it's time to burst your bubbles a little bit. Uh, yes, there are a lot of ahadis that speak about the virtue of Surah Yasin, uh, but most of them are either false or fabricated. Are you going fabricated the khadisi yogi ke surah yasin jo meko pade you read you need to read what surah kahaf and not surah kahaf it's kahaf right surah kahaf padte yes you do have a few ahadis that are weak in nature they're not fabricated they are weak in nature but we don't find any single hadith that speaks uh, specifically about the virtue of surah yasin okay hum kyu aage badh gaye yahan yeah, hold your horses. I am going to share a few examples of all those ahadis jo bachpan se hum sunte aare hai, hmm? to understand that these ahadis are classified as weak by the scholars. Okay? There is a hadith that everything has a heart. Yeah, who said that? Everything, many bhi suni hai bachpan se, so not just you. Everything has a heart. And the heart of the Quran is Yasin. Whoever reads it, it is as if he has read the Quran 10 times. Weak hadith. There's another one. Whoever reads Surah Yasin in one night will be forgiven in the morning. This is a weak hadith. Achha. Whoever continues to read it every night, then dies, will die as a shaheed, martyr. Weak, weak hadith. Whoever enters... Whoever enters the graveyard and reads Surah Yasin, their punishment will be reduced that day and he will have reward equal to the number of people in the graveyard. These are ahadis quoted, especially before doing the seed. They say, kya ki to itni ahmiyat hai. Jab ahmiyat ki baat karte hai, jahan se jo hadith mili aankhe ban karke, people start quoting them. All of these are weak ahadis. Okay? Achha. Now, some people... They narrate this particular hadith, which says that Yasin is for that for which it is read. Say it. What does it mean? If I'm sick, I read Surah Yasin in the intention that it's going to provide me Shifa. If I have exams, I'm going to see read Surah Yasin and I'm going to get straight A's. If I want my husband to get a fat bonus, all I need to do is read Surah Yasin. Meaning, Surah Yasin may make things easier based on the intention with which you have read the surah. Is there any hadith quoting that? Supporting that? No. This is completely incorrect. Completely incorrect. We don't have any narration coming from the Messenger وسلم, or from the Sahaba or for Tabi, etc. In fact, some of them have pointed out that these are these are false. We've got Ashokani, he's a very renowned scholar. He said there is no basis for this version. Right? So we must uh, know the reality of Surah Yasin. I said it's a very powerful surah. And the very fact that I chose Surah Yasin, to, I, 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 we are beginning this course with Surah Yasin, of course, there is a lot in it. Lekin, I'm not going to, we're not going to base, you know, our interest uh, on, on these, uh, based on these ahadis. What about Rita reciting Surah Yasin for the dying person? Or for a deceased person. Ye to suna hi hoga. Sab nahi suna hoga. To kisi ne bola ki ho nahi. Hum sab ne marna hi hai na. Surah Yasin padhi jayegi. To iski fikar hoi thi ki mein dhara Surah Yasin dekh to nuh kya hai. Because when I'm dying, to yehi padhni hai. Right? Hamare haa to yeh haal hai. One of my relatives was not feeling well. She's very, very old. And she went really, really down. 
and my maids came running, running up to me and they said, Baji, you are Surah Yaseen. I said, I'm not going to die, I'm not going to die, I'm not going to die, I'm not going to die. This is the kind of phobia we have with Surah Yaseen. If you are reading it, I'm not going to die. So here we need to uh, actually make a uh, distinction, I should say, between two things. Reading Surah Yaseen for the person who is dying and reading Surah Yaseen for the person who is dead. These are two different things. Okay? And we're going to deal with both the aspects and see kya sahi hai, kya hai. Okay? With regards to reading Surah Yaseen uh, on the person who is dying, this particular uh, practice has been kind of confirmed by some of the Sahabas. If somebody is dying and you read Surah Yaseen, okay? Safan ibn Umayyah, he's a Sahabi, and he said when it is recited in the presence of the one who is dying, it eases the pain of death. Okay, now someone will say that there is a hadith that you have said in the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and da, 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 da. just because I'm quoting something does not mean it is, uh, you know, something that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. This is a hadith. And it is coming from a companion. And I just told you, anything coming from companion, it carries a lot of weight because they were students of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay? Acha. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin, I'm sure you must have heard this name. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin. Uh, he said that Surah Yasin may be recited over the one who is dying. And he explained the reason why. Why? Because it talks about certain good news good news of paradise, entering into Jannah. And when you talk about, let's say you have to travel somewhere and you get a documentary, uh, you know, you're going through a documentary or some, some read up, write up on the place you're just about to visit. Would that create a little bit of excitement? You know, it's a beautiful place and you see images. We go and Google and kind of like see all the pictures. We are super excited about it because of the image and marketing and all of that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is selling the concept of Jannah in Surah Yaseen. So any person who's led a decent life, has a level of Iman, it will make the process of dying easier, inshallah ta'ala. That's the whole idea behind it. Are we clear about this? Because you're listening.
Hauz billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. How much time do we have? For 10 minutes? 10 minutes to go, okay, inshallah. All right. Do I need to uh, just like do the slide again? Yeah? Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we were talking about Sheikh Ibn Uthaymi, and he said that, you know, Surah Yasin should be recited for people who are, you know, just close to their end of their lives because it makes the process of dying easier. Uh, based on the content, okay? Now, reading the Quran over the dead is Bidda. Reading Surah Yaseen over a dead is Bidda. What is Bidda? Innovation. It's an innovation. What is innovation? Is it the lower form of Neki? What is it? It's a man-made man form of Ibadah. Uh, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, or it's, uh, after all, you're doing Ibadah, it doesn't matter if you're doing it, not doing it the way it should be done uh, according to the sunnah, but still you're doing ibadah. Therefore, no neki, no sin. Is that the concept behind it? What is the concept behind innovation in lean? It takes you away, furthest away from the right path. It's a serious matter. Take it. So yes, this is something that's not allowed. Distributing copies of Quran, Musab, hota hai aap log ke gharo mein? Hmm? And sometimes there is such a rush that happens all the time. That is also Bidda. Reading the Quran does not help the deceased person. Reading Surah Yasin does not help the deceased person. Only the children, children, if they do any good deed, it's not just reading the Quran. Even if they're fasting, they're giving charity, if they're doing any kind of good job, I'll just come to you. That's very rewarding. So why does it have to be just reading the Quran? Yes. Uh, when you say that, uh, reading the Quran and reading more, I mean, I see my like much of your head because of the Quran, but then you watch the game. But when they're reading it, I'm like, it does not make sense. It doesn't make sense for parents. Yes, absolutely. My own daughter and son, if they do anything, it's not just reading the Quran. They do any good deed. If they become, you know, if they give dawah, if they do charity, any good thing that they do, I'm going to get, they are my Satya Jariya, yes. No, they don't need to make intention at all. My kids inshallah, will be my satka jariya or, or azad jariya. That's a very important point. G. The concept of having Quran Khani is not based on any practices. Na Prophet Sallallahu ever did that. Companions never did that. Tabin never did that. Taba Tabin. Taba Tabin is the next generation after Tabin. None of them ever did that. It's like a very, very new innovation and it's more common in subcontinent. Right? Have you heard people organizing, uh, you know, gatherings in the mosque and they ask them to kind of read the Quran? It has no basis whatsoever. Yeah? These are innovative, uh, innovative deeds and we have to kind of speak up against it and ask Allah to give you the hikmah and the wisdom. And all you need to say is that this was never practiced by Prophet ﷺ or the companions or the ta'min or the taba ta'min. None of them ever sat down together to read the Quran. Ji. I have a question about Bidda. So um, what exactly is Bidda? Uh, if the Prophet did it, ta'min did it, and taba ta'min did it, then it's not a Bidda? Yes. And if someone else out of those generations, didn't they qualify as a bidda? Absolutely. First of all, bidda or innovation in deen is a good deed. So if I go to a club, that's not innovation. Right? Innovation when I'm reading Quran, I'm fasting, I'm doing some good deed. Because it is with the intention of Niki, now it can come into the category of bidda if we don't find any sunnah based on the practices that you're doing. You don't find any practices of the companion and tabin and taba tabin ever doing that. And I just come up with it. You know, subah utke ek pair pe khade hoke, mene pachas tafa ayatel kursi padni hai. People do that. You go and use, and they are, and the, the tougher you make it for them, they feel like, you know, okay, ab isse kuch hone wala hai. 
and if you straight forward bolne istighfar kar de to they get offended and mai pareshani mein you asking me to do istighfar ji bilkul of course of course कहा काम कहां से ये चीजें जमा कर रहे हैं मेजोरिटी ऑफ द नंबर्स काउंटिंग्स देयर आर अ फ्यू देयर आर फ्यू काउंटिंग्स वी डू गेट द तस्बी तस्बी फातिमी उसके अंदर 33 33 एंड 34 है देन यू गॉट आपका ला इलाहा इल्लल्लाह व अल्लाह शरीक व लहुल मुल्क व लहुल हमद व हुवा अला कुल्ली शय कदीर 100 टाइम्स उसको पढ़े तो शैतान यू स्टेज अवे फ्रॉम यू इस तरह की कुछ चीजें तो है बट वेरी फ्यू very few so why do we have to give numbers a why do we are you and i have to sit together to do it usse kya hoga absolutely absolutely yeah bilkul so this is the reason guys we are sitting together here to understand the deen hai na and know the difference between bidda acha have you heard people saying qurani to padh rahe hain koi guna to nahi kar rahe the the kya pareshani ki baat hai so what should your answer be absolutely absolutely quran padh rahe hain sirf padhna if i stand and do i'm doing my maghrib aur mera bada level of iman surah yasin samajh ke aayi thi from from quest and i sat i stand for maghrib and i say i'm going to do six rakat to koi kahega namaz hi to padh rahe hain kya fark padta hai teen nahi padhi che padh li what's the big deal right there are certain decorum that we have to follow there are certain rules aur jahan pe we are getting guidelines alhamdulillah we have to follow them the same thing ji ji and the tabai tabi majhe de istidrat aur karta tabat ji tabat tabi quoting prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or the practices of sahaba right then it's okay if tabat tabi would never ever come up with a bidah If he is doing something, he'll always tell you, "I'm doing it because I saw, I heard from this companion that he heard from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam." So there is a chain of narration that's coming to you. Yes. Uh, what's the difference between that Tabai Tabai Tabi um, practicing and the generation that comes right after that Tabai Tabai Tabi? Yes. As long as they are, acha dekho. Good question. See, I have. Do I? Can I have access to all ahadis? Say he are these today. Yes. Of course. Who? Uh, let me just ask the question again. Did I say that? Can you go through all ahadis in one in one go? I just said, can can I have access to all ahadis? Yes. Do you think this something like this happened in the age of Taba Tawain or Tawain? No. Sahaba Karam after death of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even before that, they spread out because they wanted. Okay, let me. Uh, we don't have much time, so I'm just going to conclude what we were talking about. Can somebody tell me what we were talking about? Uh, uh, they didn't have access to all the ahadis, okay. And based on that, if something did not reach a companion or tawin or the taba tawin, totally understandable, totally understandable, right? So there is a possibility that somebody would be doing 
something based on the practices of Prophet but the other person of the same generation did not know. So as long as Tabin or Tabatabin are quoting a Sahabi, hearing it from Prophet or even Sahabi, if they, they were interpreting a certain thing in a certain manner, that reached the Tabi or Tabatabi, that's absolutely fine. Well, that, um, uh, that makes three generations, right? Three generations, yes. Oh, actually, let me tell you, all the generations are included up till now. All the generations, as long as, what? You have a right chain of narration. Are we clear about that? Take care. Allah na kariye Chinese whisper. Chinese whisper mein to you ho jata hai baad mein. Word of mouth, absolutely. It was written as well. It was written just as Quran was written. Ahadis were also written. That's another miscommunication, um, uh, you know, the confusion that we have in our day-to-day uh, -day lives that people think that it was never written. It was written. But Prophet Sallallahu allowed it to be written slightly later because revelations were coming and Prophet Sallallahu narrations were also written. He didn't want them to be uh, you know, jumbled up. So he said, hold on, let's just finish with the revelation or major part of it. And then he allowed the companions to write the ahadis. Take care. Subhana Rabbi Ka Rabbi Al-Aizzati Amma Yasifun. Wassalamu ala al-Mursaleem. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There are questions. Uh, can I just take the online students' ke questions? Can you just read them out to me? Pacha, I'll see you. If you guys want to go and have your tea, you're more than welcome. I mean, let me just quickly see the questions. Uh, good deeds done by wife will benefit the deceased. Wife, no, you know, because you're not doing really a tarbiya. But let's say the husband, but if wife has been trained uh, by you or you have been facilitating the right kind of place for her to go and acquire, uh, you know, the knowledge of being, of course, then she becomes a sattvajariya. Uh, people justify that by getting together and read Quran becomes a reason for Niki. At least some Niki taking place and credit goes to the dead. Says who? This is all I want to know. Who says that credit will go to the, uh, the, the deceased person? Uh, so reading seven uh, Yasin seven times before burial also has no evidence, not at all. Three different participants. Can you, but I think we're done. So what do we say to people who say we are doing a good deed anyways, what's wrong in it? I think I just answered to that question. The problem is that it's not done in the sunnah way. Uh, good deeds done by, are, are my students going to become, oh, I love this question. Are my students going to become my Satya Jariya? Yes, inshallah, provided there is some kind of practices going on. Okay, inshallah. Okay, we're done. Ji. There are 